So I found this video and it seems very controversial because UFOs attack US Navy SEALs in Antarctica and I genuinely want to know your take. Do you think that's possible? One if yes, two if not. Let's check it out. Drop a thumbs there up. There are countless conspiracy theories which have been created over the years regarding not only the coldest but also the most remote, unforgiving continent on Earth. Antarctica. The the thing with Antarctica is that there is so little stuff that is made public about this. Right? Countless tales of ancient civilizations buried in the ice, preserved like something akin to Pompeii, quite possibly complete intact ruins of an ancient, advanced, now lost civilization. Their lifestyles, buildings, even entire cities are claimed by a number of fringe researchers as a real reality. Cities buried miles beneath the ice in a state of perfect preservation. Mm. Although we feel this may be an unlikely possibility, there could indeed be undeniable evidence of a past existence still buried under the ice, if indeed. <laughs> and the fact that there are like actual pyramid shaped structure there that's is similar to Egypt pyramids, that's actually wild. They were there at all, for one can never really be sure about the Perry Reese map. Yet today, this is a very unforgiving place, even sparking the inspiration for arguably one of the best science fiction movies of all time, mm. The Thing. Stories of UFOs crashing into this incredibly remote landscape, some in which we have covered in the past, focused in upon by the channel due to the fact that an ex How many of you watch Secure Team? Uh, because this is uh, something reminded me of him and I remember watching his video where he did cover this fact this was found on google maps that something landed you can see this and this is not just like a small trail this is a massive trail because this shape this is probably worth kilo i would say this is at least a mile long could be less could be more but i remember watching his video a long time ago and that's what expedition i got expedition was indeed made to a particular anomaly to a feature one indicative of a high speed crash into the frozen tundra this site was successfully traveled to within what we presume would have been a mobile laboratory, clearly undertaken by a well-equipped group, one who clearly didn't expect others to have spotted the site via satellite also. So they can clearly be seen via satellite imagery arriving at said crash. A tremendous effort to make, at tremendous expense, thus a strange effort for any known human-built craft, unquestionably made at great expense. Illogical for a man-made craft, even that of secret technology, but for an alien craft, such efforts could be logically argued as a realistic motive for whoever this team was funded by to make the mission to the site. And there are, indeed, undeniably, some rather intriguing stories which still hover around a number of still classified, still unreleased confidential files regarding events within the Arctic Circle. Claimed Not, by a number. Yeah, 1947. U.S. Navy Antarctic Development Project, 1947. And I would say this: there has been so many stuff, so much stuff that came out that has been made public. But again, can you actually believe stuff that's coming straight from the government? Might be a cover-up. Might they be this? Maybe they might be hiding this and that. And South Pole and North Pole has always been the mystery, right? There has been so much mystery surrounding those poles it's never because you cannot go there directly you cannot and, and you can only listen to what they're telling you and is that the truth is that not you will never know number of individuals who also claim to have been a part of said mission a mission known as operation high jump was an event during a battle within the arctic circle with what could only be described as flying saucers but alas Due to the fact that Americans have never publicly released any details regarding the operation, we can merely speculate. However, I would like to believe that they're not hostile because if you think if you really think about it, if they were hostile and if they were if they're able to come from thousands and thousands of light years, if they're really like thousands and thousands of light years away from Earth and if they can come on our planet, I mean, their technology should is going to be so advanced that they can wipe us out if they wanted to, right? I, I do believe that just like how some humans are hostile, some humans are good, some humans are bad. I'd like to believe that there would be them 
just like us, right? There would be some good apples, there would be some bad apples as well, and some would definitely wanna want us to be wiped out, and some would be good. I would like to believe in that, but I don't necessarily think that they're they're bad or evil. Uh, this is something that I'm not sure. Thoughts on this one? A story which surfaced on ancientcode.com, a website we have long supported as a superb source of antiquarian knowledge. A story accompanied by what we think, you will agree, are some of the most incredible images ever taken of UFOs, specifically unexplained anti-gravitational craft in flight ever captured. Available thanks to John Greenwald from- Yo, thoughts on this one? I mean, just like how the other day I was saying that, in my last video I was saying that this type of evidence is good! But it's never gonna be enough, man. It's never gonna be enough. And that's why I'm always on the edge. Like, I love stuff like that, man. It's so fascinating. It keeps me up at night, right? Like, this is one of my favorite topics. And I'm sure if you're watching, it's one of your favorite topic. If not, your favorite topic. And I love talking. I love listening to. I love uh, hearing theories. I love hearing speculation. I love hearing concrete proof. I love hearing what if, what could, this and that. And seeing this image... I mean, it's it's a good photo. Yeah, it's not the best of quality, but it's still there. You can see what's in front of you, and it's very fascinating. It's very intriguing, but is it real? Is my question. It can be real, but is it really real? My mind don't want to believe it because we're in what? Like you're in the year 2022 stuff can be be changed so much and it can be made uh like people can do like photoshop after effects stuff like that it can be faked it can easily be faked and this is why i'm saying man it's really sad imagine just say hypothetically saying right this image is 110 percent real why how can we find out that this is real yeah if the officials comes out and they talk about it the the government comes out and say yeah this is real then we could be like okay oh dang it oh shit oh wow it, it, it's real but other than that and even if they come out there will be some people that would say that yo man it's not real the government is trying to hide and they have a genuine concern in my opinion as well to a certain extent they have a genuine concern but it's never enough and that's truly sad the black vault who in turn received the incredible images from researcher Alex Mistretta. According to the website, quote, The photos here displayed are evidence of a close encounter between forces of the United States Navy and unidentified flying objects on the edge of the Arctic Ocean in March Damn. 1971. End quote. Are we witnessing the destruction of anti-gravitational alien craft? An alien encounter? Or, quite possibly, weapons testing events targeting reverse engineered alien technology that's a good point that's actually a really good point because there has been some news and some rumors that has been going and it's not really far-fetched i would like to believe that the government would try to somehow if they have indeed recovered crash objects crash ufos they would like to study that they would like to reverse engineer that they would like to come up with something that's similar so if let's say one day we're under attack they would like to have some sort of technology to conquer that and go against that i would like to believe that that's not really far-fetched and i do believe in that and this is a really good point what if they are really you know in these areas that are forbidden for the public they are likely testing certain stuff like that they are doing military stuff and they're testing stuff like that the images are according to said sources from the mission uss tripang ssn 674 our postulations as to what these images reveal are based upon our own logically presumed direction in which American and many other advanced military nations would take if one were presented with a crashed craft powered by said technologies. These military bodies would indeed pursue the reverse engineering of said technologies, then, secondarily, develop defense systems which were effective upon said technology. Oh, that's French, man. It says that trop beau pour être vrai, ça cliché des coins nous la ignorance et c'est peut-être la peur de banana qui servirait à discuter de les autres photographes du désir qui... So basically it's saying that it's really good to be true, it's kind of cliché, it's a cigar shape, that's basically... I'm not gonna read the entire thing, but... Yo, well, These are, of course, merely mystery history's ponderings in regards to what these images could truly be showing us. And of course, said hypothesis could indeed be incorrect. Yet regardless, the question remains, then what do these images reveal? What are pictured within? 
Regardless of the purpose of the mission, we find the possible theories surrounding the photographs highly compelling. Since the incident at Roswell, many UFO enthusiasts have been certain that Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial beings. Many claiming that the incident was indeed a UFO crash. Your Roswell crash was definitely one of the massive, the first ever incident. On that scale, obviously, there would have been other incidents as well. But Roswell is probably the most famous one, one of the most believed one across the globe, right? Uh, I know there are people, I know, I know, okay, some people don't believe it. Some people are, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Some people don't believe it, some people this and that. They came on, it's it was just a balloon, you know, they heard there was some explanation, but I would like to believe that this was one of the massive uh, cover-up for sure. And that the U.S. government not only covered the event up, but seized the craft and have been busily attempting to reverse engineer this technology ever since. These claims have been verified by a number of claimed whistleblowers who mm. say they have worked on such projects at none other than Area 51 at Groom Lake. <laughs> since these claims were made, the CIA, along with many other bodies of U.S. government, have begun to release hundreds of files, including witness testimonies of countless military personnel and civilians, testimonies and satellites see videos like that are truly fascinating because now even the government is confirming that and it's official it's officially made and it's now the news is official and they're coming out and telling us what's up they're not they're giving us breadcrumbs they're not giving us everything or just yet but this stuff is really really fascinating and there has been some people that are like yeah it's some sort of cover-up why are they telling us and that's a really good question if you're really questioning stuff like that i mean i cannot go against that because you're questioning that's actually really good that you are questioning and it's good to question that but i would like to believe that it basically i don't they're telling us what we already know right they're telling us what we already know but it's good that they're telling us but it's not enough we want we need more we want more we demand more we need to know more man and radar tracks made by individuals who have either had an encounter or have experienced unexplainable events connected to mysterious craft often moving at seemingly impossible speeds or shutting down missile silos these events would undoubtedly be a worry to the powers that be. Yep. The concern is that a hostile nation may have developed or successfully reverse-engineered these technologies in secret. However, there is also overwhelming... Why do you think they declassified those videos? Was it because of the pressure? Because that's kind of like what I heard. They really pressured them and those videos were really out in the wild already. And people were like, hey, and let's be real. That If you saw those videos, right? We all saw them. If you're here, you likely seen them. Well, maybe you didn't, but those were like UFO uh, videos. And we had the jets chasing them. We saw those image uh, videos leaking out and people were like, okay, they look good. They look all right, but I'm not sure if it's real. I'm not sure. And then the government came out and they said that it's real, right? And after that, it was like, oh, damn. Oh, damn. That's real, right? Helming evidence to suggest that these sightings yeah, this were not of man-made craft, but indeed that of extraterrestrial life. For not only are these craft witnessed over sensitive military complexes, but a number of experiences have also surrounded schools two of which we thought were compelling enough to bring to the forefront of our studies. This due to the number of eyewitnesses and what their testimony suggest. Although the accounts from a school in Zimbabwe were initially mm. discredited, regardless of the fact that over 20 students witnessed a craft land in the school field, with the students subsequently going to meet the landing craft and being no more than arm's reach from the beings that emerged, Many scientists and psychologists have attempted to discredit the event by putting- Stories like that are really fascinating. Now, I don't remember every single detail and I would likely urge you to do your own research as well. But from, if I'm not forgetting, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong for sure. But from what I heard, this happened like years and years ago and a lot of child, a lot of kids witnessed that and now they're grown up and they're still sticking with their word. They're saying that, yeah, we did really see that. We really did see people coming out that were not from this earth. We really see crafts that were not from this earth. They said that years and years ago, uh, we're talking when they were kids and now they're full adults, they're grown up and they're sticking with their word. They're not selling stuff. They're not trying to profit off of this. They're not trying to make money off of that. So 
stuff like that is truly fascinating stuff like that truly makes me believe that yup it's real it's genuine whatever they're saying will definitely happen even though there were like mesh hysteria it's not true you know you would hear stuff like that they would be bullied they would be criticized and whatnot and to a certain extent criticism is understandable because if you're really making those mass claims then you're surely gonna be seeing some smoke you're surely gonna be seeing some heat coming your way but when you're talking about like not one but just multiple kids saying the same thing and now they're adults saying the same thing then you're like okay man there must have been something putting it down to mass hysteria the witnesses to this event continue to argue that it did indeed occur furthermore supporting their claims other encounters have been experienced at other schools around the globe. At approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 6th of April, ignored for 50 years, you see this? 1966, students and a teacher from Westall High School in Australia reported seeing a flying object, described as a gray or silvery green saucer shaped craft with a slight purple hue and about twice the size of a family car. According to the students, the object was descending, overflew the high school, and disappeared behind a stand of trees. Approximately 20 minutes later, the object reportedly reappeared, climbed at speed, and departed towards the northwest. Dang. Some accounts describe the object as being pursued by five unidentified aircraft. Thanks to these, and thousands, possibly millions of other testimonies from people of countless disciplines, the acceptance that these craft exist has been forced upon the U.S. government and other governments globally. It would seem full disclosure, rather than the trickle we see now, is not a case of if, but is now one of when. It is a pursuit of truth, which we find high. Damn, you see that all, all uh, the opposite direction? And genuinely though, do you think we're ever gonna discover or do you, yeah, do you think that in our lifetimes we're gonna discover the aliens? Or do you think that, I, I do like to believe that we already have, but do you think that we're officially gonna hear about it from the government in our lifetimes? I would say in the next 50 years, that's kind of like my prediction, maybe even less, maybe a little bit more, but I would say in the next 50 years, we should, man. We really should. Highly compelling. But click on this video on the screen and I will see you right there. Subscribe. I'd love to have you around.